And now Allstate will give you a bonus. Through year for Albany Lacrosse, Loyola trying to end it. Albany Lacrosse first round matchup up next. Welcome to the NCAA Men's Lacrosse Championships presented on ESPNU by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. It is the Loyola Greyhounds of Maryland visiting the Albany Great Danes. A look at the brackets in this first round. You see the Cornell Big Red have already advanced to the second round. Albany and Loyola playing today here in Albany for a chance to meet the Big Red for a trip to the Final Four. And a good afternoon to you, and most importantly, a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I'm Rob Simulcare, along with Hall of Fame coach Jack Amber. For this Loyola team, this is a trip back to the NCAA tournament for the first time after a five-year absence. Absence, And Jack, for their second-year head coach, they feel like they're back where they belong in the tournament. Charlie Toomey is so excited to have the team back in the NCAA tournament. There was a time where Loyola made it 15 years in a row, and now they had a five-year absence. So he's got him back he's happy about it looking forward to a good game today meanwhile Jack Albany has been really one of the big stories of lacrosse this year they were 11 and 0 ranked two of the nation at one point and a big reason for the resurgence if you will of this Albany program is this tremendous scoring tandem they have up front well, they love to get up and down. They're going to push the button as hard as they can push it. They want to run and gun. They want a fast-paced game. And Frank Resetaritz and Merritt Thompson lead that assault on the goal for Albany. So Loyola here in Albany, and they've got some folks who are pretty familiar with the Albany area here, as Shane Coppins, uh, among others, hometown guys. But a lot of fans here from Albany, a lot of mothers in attendance, and a beautiful day for lacrosse. We'll be back with the start in just a moment. The NCAA men's lacrosse to Albany as Loyola and Albany about set to get things going here at John Fallon Field on a gorgeous day in upstate New York. Let's now take a look at the key players to watch, brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. And Jack, there you see, first of all, for Loyola, hey, it's Mother's Day. These two guys share a mother, Michael and Eddie Graham. They're going to be key on defense today for the Greyhounds. Well, what an interesting matchup to match up the brothers, Michael and Eddie Graham, on the brothers of Albany, you might say. Frank Resetaris and Merritt Thompson, they play like brothers. They may not be related, but uh, the Graham boys are going to have their hands full, but they're going to be able to communicate better than most because they are brothers, and I expect them to uh, match up very well on these two guys from Albany. And this is a big day here in Albany for this program and this school. Albany is seeking its first ever Division I NCAA tournament win in any sport. This is a team that only went Division I a handful of years ago, so uh, a big moment for the University of Albany Athletics for their lacrosse program, and a big crowd on hand here as well. Very nice crowd. They got here early, and uh, they are ready to go. Meanwhile, for Albany, Scott Marr in his seventh season as Albany head coach. I thought it was interesting. He said five years ago that he wanted to win a national championship within about five years. Well, this is that fifth year, and they're looking for a win here on their home field. And we'll head to the face-off circle now in what is going to be a key matchup here all day. That is Dan Callagher. He is one of the best face-off men in the country. Fifth in the NCAA with a 622 percentage. And Loyola is going to need a big performance out of Callagher if they are going to compete here against Albany. It should be a good matchup. Two teams that have done good things. Loyola in the green, Albany in the white. We are underway. The opening face-off hotly contested. They're right in the center circle. Now comes free, and it's picked up by Loyola as Callagher picks up the ground ball, and we're underway. And Callagher going right to the goal. He shoots, and the save is made right off the opening face-off. So Callagher going right to the nets. Ball near the end line, out of bounds, and it will be Albany to take over. 
I don't think there's any more important person to the Loyola program than Dan Callagher. He's winning 62% of his face-offs. He's third all-time in career face-off wins. And we saw the opening save there by Brett Queener, the goalkeeper for Albany. Let's take a quick look at uh, the keys to victory for Albany, Coach Emmer. And uh, this is a team that likes to move, and you have run and gun right on the top there. Well, they have to run and gun. That's their style. They want to limit their fouls because they have a lot of respect for Loyola's extra man program. And they feel they need to win some face-offs. If they can get 50%, that's more than they expect. 0 for 1 so far today from the face-off circle, and that led to an early scoring chance for the Greyhounds. Now the ball loose at midfield, picked up momentarily by Loyola, but now Albany comes away with it, and they're on the move. It's sent in to Levine. Levine with the feet, and the score! Score by Derek Dale, and it's 1-0 Albany. Both teams look a little nervous at the start. Some drop passes, some fumbles on ground balls. Albany comes up with the first goal. Derek Dale on the doorstep, picking up the nice feed from Jordan Levine. And there you see Levine in a two-on-one situation there, finding Dale all alone on the doorstep. Dale's 19th goal of the season. And the Great Danes get themselves off to a 1-0 lead in front of this home crowd. In talking to Scott Marr mid-season, he thought Jordan Levine was his MVP at mid-season. Did so many team, so many things to make his team successful, like come up with the loose ball and get it to the open man. And now back to the face-off circle we go, and we'll keep a close eye on this face-off matchup. The whistle off the face-off, and the ball will be handed over to Loyola off the face-off. So Loyola two for two so far from the face-off circle, Jack, and let's take a look at their keys of the game. Well, for Loyola, they need to control a transition game. They need to win the Ward X, which they're pretty good at, and they need to limit Albany's looks inside. The ability to get the ball to Ressa Terrence and Thompson, they've got to limit that to have a chance of being successful today. So Loyola now with their first set up in the offensive end. We saw Andrew Spack, and they send it over now to the left side for Paul Richards, the midfielder. Richards sends down low for Patrick Kennedy, and now they send it back up top. This is Corey Kaufman, the senior midfielder from Durham, North Carolina. And uh, a crease, a crease violation. crease violation inside, away from the ball, crease violation, and that turns it over to the Great Danes. And this is something we'll see from Albany. They like to get their goalkeeper involved in the attack. Brett Queener, good with the stick, and he keys that breakout. And they easily make their way through the Loyola ride. Now the Great Danes setting up their offense. Out top with the left-hand cradle. And the shot, score! That is number 33, Mike Ammon, with the score. He just walked in alone with the left-hand cradle, dodged his man, and beats Alex Petey. Albany two for two shooting. The one thing that allowed that to happen is Albany put Frank Reseteris in the crease area. Loyola's slow to slide or didn't slide at all off Resetaritz and that allowed Ammon to run to the goal uncontested. Mike Ammon, another of uh, several sets of brothers in this game today. Ammon putting Albany up two to nothing. So a quick start for the Great Danes. And now here again, we see a quick opportunity off the faceoff and a shot save made by Brett Queener. So Loyola so far dominant at the faceoff X. They had two quick scoring chances. Now another run for Loyola and a score. First to a crease violation and now it's waved off. It looked like it was a crease violation and the official waiting to make the call, but they did confer and make what looked to be the right call here as number six for Loyola, Mike Graham, stepped inside the crease as he fired that shot. With his left toe, he looked like he touched the crease. Very close call. Loyola in badly in need of a goal. Wish they could get that one back. You see clearly a strategy for Loyola. Now back at the other end, Albany... You talked about that inside game that 
Albany has that needs to be limited by Loyola. They're working the wings very effectively right now. And now it comes back out to Ammon. Ammon, the dodge, walking in and scoring. Oh, a big start for Albany. And Ammon has two straight. Loyola is so reluctant to slide from the inside that their midfielders are going to have to play some defense. Not much defense there by the long stick on the part of Loyola. You can't give people those kinds of shots. Mike Ammon came into this game with nine. He's already got two goals on the day, and that's going to lead to a timeout called by Loyola and clearly not the start that their head coach, Charlie Toomey, was looking for. He wants to talk things over. A quick spurt by a high-scoring Albany Great Danes team and they have themselves an early 3-0 lead on their home field. 3-0 lead for the Great Danes already, and on Mother's Day, of course, uh, it's appropriate that twins, of all people, uh, getting involved in the action here for Albany. Mike Ammon, a, number of, um, a member of a pair of twins on this Albany team. Steve, his twin brother, and uh, another set of twins for Loyola as well. There you see on the other side, so uh, hey. There's never a harder uh, job for a mom than having twins, I imagine. So uh, why shouldn't twins be figuring prominently here on Mother's Day? Now we have to win in three straight face-offs. Loyola jumped the whistle that time and, and lost this face-off. First time Albany's been able to come away with possession out of that face-off X. And uh, they've already got themselves a 3-0 lead. So looking to add to it here in the early going off the Loyola timeout. If you notice here for Albany, both Ressa Tarrets and Thompson are inside in the crease area. Loyola does not want to slide from those two guys, at least the first couple of times around. Right and there, now, they did slide. And the pass misconnecting there, pass intended for John Alpizar, the sophomore midfielder from Summit, New Jersey, went over a stick, out of bounds, and that'll be a turnover to Loyola. It looks like, Rob, that uh, Loyola's adjusted a little bit their defense. That time they did slide off the crease before they were not doing that, and it really hurt them. So Loyola taking over this Greyhound team, recipients of an at-large berth out of the ECAC. They finished second to Georgetown during the regular season. Georgetown, by the way, just won their first round game. We'll talk about the scoreboard around the NCAAs, but Georgetown making it one for one so far for the ECAC, a one goal win. This is a big possession here for Loyola. They need to settle themselves down, control the ball for a little bit, get themselves a goal, and get back in the flow of the game. This Loyola team uh, has shown an ability to come back over the course of the season. Started out 0-2 and trailed Penn State in their third game of the year by six goals in the fourth quarter before coming back to win that game 10-9. to nine. That was a turning point in the Loyola season. And one of the things that really got them going, they followed that game up with a win over Duke to even their record at 2-2, two and two, and that was a big, big turning point that got them to where they are right now, playing in the first round. Here you see the Loyola season recap the big win over duke a highlight now they get it in close but now a pass misconnecting as loyola was unable to get it inside ball comes across the center line battle for the ground ball here as midfielders go at it sticks flying and loyola comes away with it number 22 for the greyhounds bringing it in that was greg leonard and now they try to convert in the unsettled play and a save made oh Pretty save by Brett Queener at point-blank range. Yep. Interference yep. with the goalie. Give the ball back to Albany. There you see the save, and that might have been close to a crease violation had Queener not made the save. And then the contact gives the ball back over to Albany. So Queener looking sharp early on for the Great Danes. Loyola begging for a goal right now. They need one badly. They'd rather score one before they give up this fourth one to, uh, to Albany. <clears throat> and for Albany, Greg Leonard. Pardon me, that's Jordan Levine, number 22. Dodging with the right hand. Levine working his way down in and shooting. 
And that ball was deflected. Not sure if the goalkeeper got a piece of that, but knocked away out of bounds. No, I don't think he did. It's interesting right now that Albany is doing it uh, without any contribution from Ressa Tarrets and Thompson. The other guys are handling the ball, getting good runs at the goal as Loyola shuts off the, t the high scores. This is Derek Dale, who's got a goal behind the net, sending it out. And that's one of the things when you have two great scorers like that, it can sometimes open up opportunities for other players. And we're seeing those other players involved right now for Albany. Eric Wolf, number six, cradling on the left wing. And it comes back out top to Corey Small. Small now to the right side for Levine. Levine working his way down in. Comes back out for Small. Small, nice dodge, a shot, save made. Believe that got in on the goalkeeper, but Albany able to control off the rebounds. Good save by Petey that time. He needs to make one or two to get in the flow of the game himself. But Albany able to control the loose ball, and this now turning into an extended possession for the Great Danes. Here's number six, Eric Wolf, working his way in, and he scores! Eric Wolf, the senior from Baldwin, New York, puts it by Petey, and it is 4-0 Great Danes. Eric Wolf has been a part-time player and getting some extra time today. That was an excellent shot right in the corner. You can see on the replay right up in the corner. We'll give him credit for shooting the ball well. Again, do no slide, no slide from Loyola. So a lot of players getting involved here. Eric Wolf, his third of the game, and Jack, it is interesting. We talked about the firepower of that top duo, and here we see Albany up 4-0, and neither Ressa Tarrets nor Thompson figuring so far. They can't, they can't blame their problems on Gallagher. He's won four face-offs. The only one he didn't win was when he jumped the whistle. So they're getting the ball. You know, Loyola's getting the ball. Got to do something with it. Well, here's a chance for them to get their offense settled down here. Number 15, Corey Kaufman, a senior midfielder working his way down deep now. Kaufman dodging with the left-hand cradle, taking it himself all the way through. His shot was knocked away. And across the line it comes. That's going to be Loyola ball. Loyola's getting excellent looks. Queener's come up with a couple of terrific saves. And you remember the one where the guy towed the crease. So Loyola, if they stay with the plan on offense, they're going to score some goals. they got to stop him at the other end. Now number eight for Loyola, Shane Coppins has it knocked away on a nice defensive play. And Albany picks it up, but then throws it away. Ball on the ground, and that's going to be a turnover. It'll go back to the Greyhounds. Nice defensive play there, knocking it away from Shane Coppins. But uh, Albany misconnecting on the pass. Loyola's offensive plan appears to be to take their middies behind. They feel they can get some good shots that way and also control the tempo of the game. So don't be surprised when we see those middies like Corey Kaufman here carrying the ball, take it behind the goal. Kaufman turns back, feeds Paul Richards. Richards, a junior midfielder from Baldwinsville, New York. And now, fed in front, number 20, Burgess. And the shot score! So there's the first goal for Loyola. And that was number 36, Andrew Spack, the senior from Lafayette, New York. Actually, he was the best player out of Central New York two years ago, three years ago, 2004. Best high school player, Andrew Speck. Excellent dodge there, and it all started with the midfield invert, drew the slide from Albany, and they moved the ball with three quick passes for the goal and the dodge. Speck, a first-team All-ACC, All-ECAC, I should say, selection at Lafayette, New York, and uh, his 16th goal of the game. So, Loyola after the slow start, gets on the board, 4-1 game, still very much in the early going, and now Albany, which has struggled from that face-off X, able to pick one up off the ground. 4-2, you see Loyola leading in the face-off department so far. Dan Barnes, Loyola, an Albany face-off man, won that one cleanly. That's the first time he's done that today. So now we see Levine and Ammon working it. Levine will now head back out for a substitution. Ammon cradling with the right hand, sending behind the net. 
And now we see Derek Dale. Derek Dale trying to feed, gets it to Ammon. Now around it comes, and a shot score! Big shot by Corey Small from the right wing, and it's 5-1 Albany. Albany's been very impressive offensively. They're shooting the ball very well. Another excellent shot you'll see on the replay here with a left hand. Corey Small bangs it up in the corner. And the finish there is Small whips it right past Alex Petey. And some uh, nice passing, good ball movement there from Albany. They really whip it around from the left wing to the right wing pretty quickly. Well, they're going to, uh, Loyola, that is, uh, is going to need to come up with some stops here uh, to make this a game. I think they can score goals at the other end. They need to stop Albany. Now off the faceoff, ball loose. Battled for and picked up by the long stick of P.T. Ritchie for Loyola. His pass hits the ground, but Loyola able to recover and bring it in. Patrick Kennedy, number 23, bringing things in for the Greyhounds. Now... Dan Bowers, number 20 on the left wing. Bowers being worked on by the long stick. Sends out for Greg Leonard. Now Jordan Rabideau, one of the two Rabideau brothers on this Loyola team. We've got three sets of brothers playing today. The Rabideaus, the Ammons, and on defense, the Grahams for Loyola. In fact, both of the Rabideau brothers on the field at the same time right now. This is number, nine, number 11, Ryan with the left-hand cradle. Ryan now sends it around. Comes over to Leonard. Greg Leonard in deep for Shane Coppins. Jordan Rabideau was the highly recruited one out of high school. Ryan Connor was brought along with it, and Ryan has developed into an outstanding player himself. They're from Somers, New York, in the Hudson Valley area, not far from here. And now we see Jordan Rabideau drawing the contact and being forced to retreat and send it back outside. Now, number eight, Shane Coppins. Coppins working his way in. Boy, look at that interior Albany defense just not letting anyone in front of that goal mouth. And the crowd giving uh, some appreciative applause every time they ward an attacker away. Now Ryan Rabideau in the corner as Loyola trying to set something up here. A long possession, but still no shot for the Greyhounds. They work it around, comes to Leonard. Leonard fires it high and wide, out of bounds. Loyola will maintain possession. The officials are letting them play today. We saw a check on Leonard up in the shoulder neck area, which uh, was not called a moment ago. And a very nice crowd on hand here watching this game on a beautiful day here in upstate New York. We've been blessed with some nice weather the last couple of days, first in Ithaca, now here in Albany. This Slightly better fortunes than they've had down in Carolina, Jack. Yeah, no doubt about that. A lot of rain there. This is Steve Ammon playing defense. He and his brother are a very good short stick defensive minis. Play both ends of the field. Here's Rabideau. Up top, Leonard. Leonard with a dodge, maintains possession, but as he tries to shoot, has it knocked away. Tremendous defense there by the Great Danes. Ball on the ground and picked up by number 20. That's Steve Ammon. One of the Ammon brothers picking it up, but then on the back check, loses. Recovered by Albany, and Craig McDonald will hold on and send it down, down deep. Hard work there by Albany as they managed to break their way through that Loyola ride. Here we have five goals by Albany and not one point by Merrick Thompson or Frank Resetarits. Interesting. Really haven't even called their names much so far. In fact, the two of them have combined for a grand total of zero shots so far today. And Jack, you think that was a, a strategy coming into this to try to get some of the others involved, and obviously not what Loyola was keen on defensively? Well, the strategy is put both those guys on the crease and see how Loyola's going to react to it defensively. And uh, they've taken advantage of it. Those two guys have made their contribution today without ever touching the ball, because Loyola is so self-conscious about not leaving them. It's opening it up for the other guys, who have shot well, by the way. Here's Derek Dale 
behind the net. Now Mike Ammon, who's got two goals. The best defensemen for Loyola appear to be the Graham brothers. And they're isolated on the crease, not having much to do with the action. Albany has a chance to go at the other defenders, and they're taking advantage of it. Jordan Levine. Up top. That was Ressa Tarrets with uh, a rare touch up in that high slot area. And now Mike Ammon behind the net. 35 seconds to go in this first quarter, and it looks like Albany's going to hold for a last-second shot here. Ammon behind the net. Dale. Dale working around the crease. Dale spinning in the wing area. Now back to Ammon. Ammon drawing the double team up top. And a shot from Levine. The save made there by Alex Petey. Loyola trying to make something happen quickly here, but instead they turn it over and back comes Albany. Eight seconds to go. Sent down in deep, but the pass broken up. Knocked away, out of bounds. That was off Loyola with five seconds to go. Albany will try a last second pass and shoot they get it inside and oh it was Dale trying to make an acrobatic shot but couldn't get it on goal and that is the end of a first quarter that saw the Albany Great Danes at home in the first round for the first time dominating Loyola a 5-1 Albany lead we'll be back with the second quarter right after this on ESPNU University and a happy home crowd so far, a 5-1 Albany lead, and it's been all offense from unexpected places so far for the Great Danes, Jack. The, uh, the two big boys have gone to the crease, and all their teammates have taken advantage of the outside opportunities and the, the no slides that Loyola presents by Reza Tarrets and Thompson being on the crease. A good scheme by Scotty Marr. We'll see if it changes here in the second period. So the big duo of Ressa Tarix and Thompson. No shots so far today, but as Jack points out, that doesn't mean they're not a part of this uh, Albany offense as they have apparently opened up some big-time opportunities for other players. Now again, Loyola off the faceoff, trying to make something happen quickly. Well, Dan Gallagher's doing his job. He certainly is. Gallagher uh, picking up the faceoffs and going right to the net. Now Loyola, a chance in front, a shot, and a save made there by Queener for Albany. Excellent save by Greg Queener. Errant outlet pass, however. And the turnover gives it back to the Greyhounds. And in comes Loyola. Andrew Spack, number 36, feeds Paul Richards. Great hustle by Andrew Spack to get back on defense and come up with that pass that Queener threw from the crease. 14-19 to go here in the second quarter at John Fallon Field in Albany, New York, on the campus of Albany University. Rob Simulcare and Jack Emmer with you. The 15th NCAA tournament appearance for Loyola in this first round matchup against Albany. And Albany making their fourth appearance in the last five years, but still looking for that first win, that breakthrough win for this program. And they've got themselves off to an outstanding start here in the quest to get that win. 5-1 lead Loyola with a shot in front, blocked by Albany. Good defense there by the Great Danes, Tyler Endress making the play but again the ride of Loyola creates the turnover now ball back on the ground a big hit and a whistle is going to come off of that as number 19 for Albany Craig McDonald just hammered his man with the long pole and that's going to result in a man up opportunity for the Greyhounds well this is one thing that Albany wanted to stay away from and they did not commit a penalty in the first period oh uh, you see that the long pole right to the thigh area of Loyola player number eight Shane Coppin so that'll be a full one minute penalty he against earned, McDonald he earned it and it didn't look like the official from my viewpoint was going to make the call until Shane Coppins did not get up <clears throat> well Coppins uh, is up now and uh, he's going to be a part of this man up opportunity for Loyola as you saw in the graphic, there are uh, just over a third as far as converting on these man-ups, which is uh, obviously not a great statistic for them. And we see them turn it over here immediately in the first 20 seconds of this opportunity. Not what they need, down by four. 
Here comes Brett Queena out of the goal like he likes to do. And Queena tried to hit his long stick. Man, Got a Mark shot right now. Allen, but it's going to come back as the turnover. Queener is working his way back to the goal mount, but not in time. Score for Loyola. And I guess that is the danger of having Queener come out like that. They turn it over, and Queener not back in time. Loyola scores a man up goal. I think Queener hurt him that time by the turnover. Didn't get back in the goal as quickly as he needed to because he was up by the midfield line. So the goal scored by Dan Bowers, number 20. And, you know, interesting situation there. You're, you got a man up situation for your opponent. And Queener coming away out of net. Obviously, you really want to kill time more than anything in that situation. Instead, you create a turnover as his pass misconnects and the quick goal for Loyola. So a break for the Greyhounds, and that has them within three. And they get possession again off the faceoff. So we'll see if that could be a turning point for Loyola as Stephen Hess, number three, brought it in with the long stick. Good play from Hess. Now Loyola establishing the offensive play, and Rabideau sending it down deep for Coppins. The fact that they can dominate the faceoff like they're doing gives Loyola hope that they can come back. Less defense they play, the better. Because right now they have not stopped Albany. I tell you, Queener in the goal has come up with some great saves. Or this would be a 5-4 game. So it's not as one-sided as the score indicates. Here's Coppins, and Coppins knocked down from behind. That'll be a penalty against the Great Danes yet again. Coppins drawing his second penalty in the last couple of minutes. This time... For Albany, it will be again McDonald. So Craig McDonald, that time his stick got into the feet of Coppins, and for the second straight time, McDonald goes to the penalty area. McDonald, very aggressive kid out of Geneva, New York, upstate New York boy. Better watch himself. You know, you can foul out in this game. Five fouls and you're out. Most people forget that. It's true. That's the uh, same rule as college basketball. And look at this. It's going to be another minute opportunity here for Loyola, and this... String of penalties, two in a row by McDonald, giving the Greyhounds a chance to get right back in this. I think this is a big extra man. You get the 5-3, get a little confidence in what you're doing, a little momentum. There goes Queena jumping out of the goal. He's yeah, very that clever. Play. Yeah, very clever as he steps in clever. to pick off that pass. Now, though, ball on the ground off a nice poke check by Loyola. 30 seconds left on this man up, ball still loose. Now, up, oh, not picked up. A chance to pick it up there for Andrew Spack. Couldn't do it. Now Albany has it, a man down. Albany actually had a potential scoring chance there, but instead they decide to turn away and kill some clock. There's Steve no Anna. excuses for not picking up the loose ball on this uh, fine artificial surface. Every bounce is a true one. Andrew Spack had a chance to pick it up there in the midfield for Loyola, but instead that allows Albany to gain possession and kill off the remainder of this man up opportunity. So back to even strength. That was an opportunity missed for Loyola. They need to convert those extra man opportunities. You don't get too many of them, especially of that 60 second variety. It's funny, they, they converted on the first one almost by a bit of luck as Queener came out of the net. But uh, the passing, not crisp enough for them down low now. For Albany, it's Ammon, who's got two goals. Well, they need to get the ball to Steve Ammon up top to go against uh, Ryan Rabideau. There's a big size difference. Shot and a save made there by Alex Petey. So Petey able to make the stop. And now he'll come out to get Loyola through this Albany ride. Good work by number nine, Merrick Thompson, on the ride for Albany. Thompson and Dale working at Thompson that time knocked it away from his man and instead Albany flings it all the way down the Loyola sends it all the way down to the other end kind of a desperation clear attempt there and we're going to get a whistle on the ground and Loyola will have possession funny sequence Jack well they were coming up to the 20 second limit they have to get the ball over the midfield line so actually he did a good thing but what so many young defensemen forget to do is redirect the ball to the other side of the field. Loyola could have cleared it easily if they got the ball to the opposite side, but they didn't do that. So Shane Coppins will 
take it behind the net for the Greyhounds. Coppins running into some heavy traffic along that wing area as the long poles getting to him, and then the pass across is picked off by Queener. That's two pickoffs for Queener. And he's got to watch himself. He doesn't get too cute here. That time, Queener able to connect with Eric Wolf on the clear. And now Wolf with that right hand cradle working his way past the defense of number 29, Paul Richards. Wolf being worked on by Richards. Goes behind the net for Derek Dale. This Albany team was 11-0 at one point this year. Number two team in the country behind Cornell, which of course is still undefeated, and a score! Walking in, and the left-hand shot from Matthew Green, and it is 6-2, Great Danes. Another no-slide situation on Loyola's part. They haven't adjusted yet to that. Uh, they probably don't want to slide to their long stick defensive midi, but he got beat outright and they needed some uh, defensive team help. Tenth goal of the year for Matthew Green, the senior from Canandaiga, New York. 52 career points now for Green. He's actually been playing with a, an ACL injury for quite a while, but he was moving very nicely on that one. So Albany is uh, obviously showing some ability for other people to contribute. We still haven't called Ressa Tarrett's and Thompson's name, have we? I think Ressa Tarrett's has had about one touch in this game so far, and, I, and the only time I've called Thompson's name has been in the ride. So an unexpected display of offensive diversity here by the Albany Great Danes, and Albany's coaching staff has got to love what they've been able to do here, and not only this game, but getting those guys involved could make them a much tougher opponent down the road if they do indeed advance. This bodes well uh, for Albany, no doubt about it. Playing very well without any scoring contribution for the big boys. So a four goal lead here on the home field of Albany University, John Fallon Field. It's a long game though. There's a lot of time to come back. Now Loyola working inside, ball knocked away. And now saved by Queener. So actually a good job there by Jake Wilcox for Loyola as he avoided the poke check, got in front, back the other way. Albany making things happen quickly, and they score! Oh, beautiful play in the unsettled situation. And Derek Dale registers his second goal of the game. And Merrick Thompson got an assist. How about that? Finally touched the ball in the unsettled situation. Very nice job by Albany. Albany breaking through the center of the field very quickly there and beautiful work around the crease. Derek Dale there to put it away. Nice play here by the long stickman, number 38, Mark Felon to set that up. So this Great Danes team showing uh, a lot of depth here. And now off the faceoff, the one area of this game that Loyola really has dominated. Ball on the ground, Albany with a chance to pick it up there, but unable to do so, and it's going to be Loyola to come away with the first possession. So Loyola still dominating now, a hit from behind, and a flag thrown. And number 12 for Loyola, that was Callagher. He was hammered as he tried to come away with it. You notice here one official was saying loose ball push while the other official was saying possession. Here you see Callagher and... And it was possession. Yep. The push from the rear knocked the ball out of his stick. And so that'll give Loyola another man advantage as Frank Resitaritz goes to the penalty area. Now this Loyola team that's uh, scored almost 40% on the year needs to convert this. They're in a 1-3-2 set. And the pass knocked away. The passing for Loyola has struggled in these man-ups. They've had a number of balls knocked away. This one goes across the line out of bounds. But the Greyhounds will maintain possession with 10 seconds to go on the man-up. I'm impressed by Albany's team defense, particularly the short stick middies. Now Loyola working it around. 
And the shot goes wide. Number 22, Leonard. Leonard, Leonard a, yep. A big boy for Loyola. He's going to get his shots today. He's going to have to make a contribution to get Loyola back in this game. Greg Leonard. So that shot by Leonard, missing the mark, and that is going to be the end of the man-up opportunity for Loyola. Back to even strength. And Andrew Spack from midfield. We got a mismatch here. Shane Coppins going against a short stick who is trying to shut him off. Coppins it's with 18 goals on the season. 44 points, the leading scorer for this Greyhound team, and he dodges his way inside, but again, a pass misconnecting for the Greyhounds, and it seems like that passing game in this set has just not been as crisp as the Greyhounds needed to be. I think Shane's uh, kind of rushing things, trying to make things happen. He's probably got 40 relatives here at the game today coming back to play in Albany. Sometimes that makes you a little tight. Here's Spack again, working his way in. Spack's been impressive for Loyola. He's been aggressive, He's gotten some good shots. That was a good look by Spack, but missing the mark and out of bounds. Loyola maintaining possession. Ryan Rabideau. Attacking from the midfield behind the goal. This is all invert offense for Loyola. Rabido with a short stick on him. Sends up top for Patrick Kennedy. Now comes around. Greg Leonard. Leonard, left-hand cradle, trying to make a spin move. Fired a shot from the ground. Comes free. And the shot there by Kennedy. Missing the mark. Out of bounds. Loyola will hold on. You know, Brett Queen has only saved 51% of the shots on the season, but he's doing a better job than that today. He looks like he's right on these shots by Loyola, seeing the ball very well. Now, Coppins in front, the pass and the save made by Queen, a pretty save off the short hop by Queener, and look at him getting pumped up and pumping up his teammates. Back the other way come the Great Danes. Chance in transition, score! What a play from end to end for the Great Danes. Queener on one end and Leonard on the other. It all starts with the save by Queen. An excellent stick side low save. Throws it over the top. And Greg Leonard decides to go over the head there and gives the goal opportunity. Levine, we should say. Sorry, Jordan Levine, yep. Levine got the goal, and Greg Leonard went over his head with a stick check. He should have pushed him behind the goal. So a big sequence there, and after a two-goal spurt by Loyola, Albany has themselves back up by six in Albany. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. May I have your attention, please? Eight two Albany on top here. Four thirty two to go in the second quarter, and Brett Queener, the senior goalkeeper for this Albany team, making save after save and getting himself and his team pumped up after this one. Look at that beautiful pickup, and then check out the reaction from Queener as he is jacking himself up, jacking this crowd up. Meanwhile, at the other end, Albany making uh, things happen and a goal from Jordan Levine. So six saves from Queener, and that one opened up a transition opportunity that Albany converted for an 8-2 lead. It all started with Brett. Brett's the son of uh, Harry Queener, the uh, lacrosse coach for years at Penn Yan High School. And Brett first went to Penn State, had some academic troubles, went back to Herkimer Community College, now shows up at Loyola doing a great job. Nothing like a little maturity. Well, this Loyola team trying now to settle things it has been a defensive nightmare so far for the greyhounds trying to deal with this potent albany offense not the guys we expected to see as we've said before but albany getting a lot of players in the mix here and an eight goal explosion for the great danes still 340 to go in the first half loyola needs stops and they also clearly need some scores as they try to Work their way in here. Here's Corey Kaufman sending it in down low. This is number 20, Dan Bowers, senior attackman. Comes around for Spack. Albany not making it easy at him. They're going to have to attack him from the top while he always get some run bys. Here's one. Here's a run by Dodge and a score. Paul Richards 
with a nice spin move and the left-handed shot. Richards, the junior from Baldwinsville, New York, and he puts it past Queener. It's 8 3. Notice there's a lot of Central New York, Upstate New York boys here making a contribution to both teams. Baldwinsville, New York. Paul Richards. Nice play. This uh, Loyola team, for a team from Maryland, you look at their roster and it's New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois. I hardly see a, a Maryland, we've got about two or three guys from Maryland on this team, but an untraditional approach for a team from the Baltimore area going up north for their talent. And that was a shame what we just saw right here. Uh, Gallagher won it clean, looked like a fast break, and it was a violation on the wing by his Loyola teammate to give the ball to Albany. And look at those face-off numbers, 10-3. Loyola with the advantage. The NCAA Men's Lacrosse Championships continue on ESPNU with quarterfinal action starting next Saturday at noon Eastern. For more information on the 2007 NCAA Lacrosse Championships, go to NCAAsports.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Time out on the field right now, so let's take a look at the brackets in the NCAA lacrosse tournament so far. Duke advanced easily over uh, Providence down in Durham yesterday. Navy and North Carolina were supposed to play that game yesterday. Tough weather in the North Carolina area. That game was postponed until today, so they'll play at about 5 o'clock this afternoon NCAA and uh, ESPNU like will not be the televising that game supply, live but we will be giving you NCAA updates throughout game. the game we are televising at that time meanwhile the bottom half of the of the uh, of the board and you see Johns Hopkins with the win over Notre Dame in a close one last night and uh, Georgetown getting the win over Princeton just this afternoon a big win for Georgetown and they now advance to meet the Blue Jays in the quarters And a nice crowd on hand here, and a uh, beautiful day. You look at those brackets, uh, what jumps out at you? That, that is a big win, isn't it, for Coach Yurick and the Georgetown Hoyas? Even though he was the seeded team, uh, anybody that knows anything about anything knew it was going to be a close game. Billy Tierney's Princeton team was going to make it that way, a one-goal game. That's a big win for Georgetown, a, a very successful program that's had trouble advancing in the NCAA tournament in the past. And... Uh, Look up there. I believe that's a Cornell hat I see up there in the top row. It is indeed the big red coaching staff on hand to scout this game. About a 160-mile drive from Ithaca to Albany that we all uh, made last night. And not surprisingly, the Cornell coaching staff here to check out their opposition. And right now it looks like uh, it's still early, but Albany in the driver's seat to be the ones playing the big red next weekend. I think Jeff Tambroni uh, is the coach of the year. His team is so well coached, undefeated, done a great job. Meanwhile, a chance for Albany as a point-blank save made by Alex Petey off the shot from the ground. Albany with the extended possession there, and now on the far sideline ball, knocked out of bounds. I think Loyola might have stepped on the sideline there, and it's going to be Albany possession. Good riding effort by Albany. Pinched the Loyola player on the sideline, got the ball back. So the Great Danes with possession and a five goal lead here, coming up on two minutes to go in this first half. Thompson against the short stick. Thompson has not scored yet. Albany working it around. Now a chance in front and a goal. And there he is, Frank Resiteritz. We didn't mention Thompson and Resiteritz too much, but just as the first half about to end, they team up to put one in. 9-3, great things. Now it appears that Thompson and Resiteritz are starting to handle the ball. Things may not bode well for Loyola. They laid low for most of this first half, but now Thompson and Resiteritz, boy, beautiful stick work there by Resiteritz in front. Too much stick, not enough body on Loyola's part. He should have thrown a shoulder into that check. So Frank Resitaritz, the nation's leading scorer, registers his first point of the game. We'll check and see whether Thompson got an assist. Thompson and Resitaritz coming into this game were tied for the all-time lead in scoring at Albany, 236 points each. So if Thompson did, in fact, get an assist on that goal, they'll stay tied at 237. I tell you, 236 points 
would set the record at most schools to have two of them here at the same time. That's very unusual. And that's got to make uh, this Albany team feel like it is their year to break through and to get themselves to the quarterfinals of this tournament. I've been impressed with Albany today. Boy, they've gotten right after it. They haven't been shy. Nothing like being at home. And they're undefeated at home, 9-0 and this year. It shows today. Well, Loyola trying to make something positive happen before we head to the locker rooms here at halftime. Still a lot of time to go for the Greyhounds, but they need to register something on the offensive end. Here's Rabideau, Ryan Rabideau. They flip it around. Dodging work here done by Loyola. That was Jake Wilcox trying to get by the long stick of number 25, Chris Stronger, but could not do so. Stronger's not a big kid, but he does bother him. Oh, boy, he's still bothering him. Boy, Stronger he's... working hard and picking up the loose ball. Beautiful work by Stronger. He's like a net. You can't get rid of him. A sophomore from Clifton Park, New York, right down the road from Albany. And now, back at the other end, Albany trying to make something happen. A whistle, and that's going to be Albany possession with 27 seconds to go, and this crowd giving it up for the Albany Great Danes. Beautiful work at both ends of the field for this team, and they are showing why they've been such a big story in the world of college lacrosse this year. Coming up on the Warrior Lacrosse Halftime Report, T. Wharton Trophy finalists will run down the list of finalists that was announced on Thursday. NCAA Tournament news and first half highlights and stats. All that coming up on the Warrior Lacrosse Halftime Report. Meanwhile, log on to your online source for all things college sports, ESPNU.com. This online gateway will connect you to all the college sports content from ESPN. Log on to ESPNU.com today. We are college sports. And we've got some college sports happening right here. And a big day for the University of Albany, for Albany as they try to get their first ever NCAA tournament win in any sport. This is a program athletically that only went Division I about seven or eight years ago, and uh, this would be huge for the Albany Athletic Department. There you see the Division I history of this lacrosse program. Scott Marr taken over in 2001, and he has gradually and steadily built this program into what you can fairly say now is a you know, top 10 serious contender to make it to the Final Four. This senior class started this success and they appear to be uh, ready to finish it off in grand style uh, they made the program uh, they made the ncaa for three straight years and then missed it last year but this senior class has been in the tournament three times the Loyola senior class has never been in the tournament it's kind of showing today albany trying for one last score before halftime and it's thompson in front the bounce shot score Mary his first goal of the game on a nifty little backhand one-hop shot. And it is now double digits for the Great Danes, 10-3. You see here on the replay, Jordan Levine throws it back to Thompson with his left hand, gets it just inside the pipe. What an accurate shot. You really can't fault Alex Petey, just well-placed big goal right before they go in the half with nine seconds to go. Merrick Thompson, the senior attack man from Stony Creek, Ontario. And it's double digits in the first half. Last second run here for Loyola. Ball knocked away on the ground and that will do it for the first half of play. A dominant first half for the Albany Great Danes. Number five seed in the NCAA tournament and they're playing like a five seed or better so far as they have themselves a seven goal bulge here at halftime. We'll take a break, come back with the Warrior Halftime Report, but it has been all Albany all day here in upstate New York. At first, but got involved later, and there you see the shooting percentage for Albany, very impressive. They had 16 shots, 15 of them on goal, and 10 of them finding the back of the net. The saves about even, but Queener making some strong saves, ground balls even. The one area really dominated by Loyola, face-offs. That's something they thought they could do in this game. They have dominated, but it has just not led to scores, and a big reason for that 
the turnovers at the bottom of the chart there. 11 turnovers for Loyola off of only five for Albany. So they're winning the faceoffs, but giving it right back to Albany, and that leads to a big lead for the Great Danes. This halftime report presented by Warrior the means to dominate. It's 10-3, Albany. Doc, I can't stop. It's always one more hit, one more score. Kids stare at us in the street. I thought it would stop after college. But now at the MLL, people want to know. So this is the second in a quadruple header. And there you see Brett Queener, who uh, is getting, uh, has been pumped up, getting his backup goalie pumped up as well. He's just getting everybody pumped up out there as uh, he's been feeling it. And he now heads down to the other end of the field. And a big reason the Great Danes find themselves with a comfortable seven goal lead here. What do you expect now to see? I mean, one thing Albany, uh, Loyola has been able to do, Jack, is dominate from that faceoff X, but the turnovers in turn have really killed them when they've had possession. And I think the biggest adjustment Loyola needs to make is how they're gonna defend these uh, great Danes of Albany. They've been reluctant to slide or Fressa Terrence and Thompson, and it's made a big difference. They need to go, they need to be more aggressive, need to slide earlier and uh, make the adjustment on defense. Oh, and just off play here to start the second half. A huge collision in midfield and a score for Loyola. So a big hit and a collision between an Albany player. That was actually Queener involved in the collision. We'll get to that in a second. Well, it, actually it wasn't. So meanwhile, Queener has it put past him. Uh, some fever action here. And it was Shane Coppin scoring. And it's 10-4 Albany. Let's take a look at play here off this faceoff and a huge hit put on right there. That was an aggressive was hit by number 29. Richards, Paul Richards. Very aggressive play and Shane Coppins finished it off. Just what Loyola needs if they're gonna have a shot, scoring the first 14 seconds of the second half. All right, so that time the faceoff dominance of Loyola paying dividends and now again, it is a faceoff win for Loyola and brought in quickly by Dan Callagher. Boy, Dan Callagher really has put on a show today. He's not just winning these face-offs, but he's winning them and then bringing the ball right into the attack zone all on his own. Remember, right at the opening face-off, he went to the goal and had a shot, and it uh, hit Brett Queen in the foot. Uh, so he's been uh, the best player for Loyola today, Callagher has. What an asset for this Greyhound team as they try to work their way back, a pass knocked away there as Tyler Andres got to stick on it for Albany. Now the ball cleared to midfield and it's going to be picked up by the Great Danes. Number 22, Jordan Levine, who has scored today, working his way in. Levine running, passing, and a chance score. A transition goal for Merrick Thompson off the feed from Jordan Levine. You do not want to get in that run and gun kind of game with Albany. That's where they excel. And uh, Merritt Thompson finished it off. Jordan Levine, great speed in the middle of the field, created the play. And that's what Albany does best. Levine has been impressive here for Albany. A junior from Beth Page, New York, the fourth leading scorer on this Albany team. First team all league two years in a row for the Great Danes. And he has done some pretty things, getting the assist there on the goal for Thompson. And it's right back to a seven goal advantage for Albany. And again, here's Callagher off the faceoff, advancing it in for Loyola. But Albany able to pick it up off the turnover. And that, that is the theme we've been talking about. Faceoff win for Loyola, turnover back to Albany. And look at this, Cleaner. Bringing it all the way across the midline. Brett Queener with the clear all the way into the attacking zone. What a job by Brett Queener. And he acknowledges the applause of the crowd as he heads back to his goal mount. Got a little thespian in him, doesn't he? That he boy? really does. A little bit of a ham, but you gotta love it. The crowd clearly appreciates it. Meanwhile, Corey Small sending it in low for Derek Dale. Got a feeling we're looking at a high score in second half here, Roberts. Uh, Loyola takes some chances to get back in it. Now the whip shot, missing the goal. Fired there by number 43, Corey Small, out of bounds. And Albany will maintain possession. 
Boy, he can rip it. He's a, a Canadian kid out of St. Catharines, Ontario, Holy Cross High School. I've been very impressed by Albany's accuracy of shots. All their shots, most of them have been on goal. Albany now sends it around to that right side. They're looking for Resetarich. Instead, they'll fire the shot and the save made by Alex Petey. He got a piece of it.